Yellow nut sedge is a highly competitive weed that can reduce the yields of field and vegetable crops. It spread extremely quickly from one field to another via machinery. Like other farmers, Ueli Izili suddenly found himself face to face with this problem. Although I've used different weed control methods, this weed has spread everywhere. At first I thought it was millet, but it must be something else. In fact, at first glance it's easy to confuse yellow nut sedge with millet. Both germinate at about the same time, around mid-April. This is yellow nut sedge? But how do I recognize it? The yellowish-green color in the tapered tips and prominent midrib of the leaves are characteristic of yellow nut sedge. The plant is completely glabrous. Yellow nut sedge belongs to the Cyperaceae family, like sedges or rushes. The stem has a triangular cross-section and is nodeless. The usual grass herbicides cannot penetrate the leaves and thus have no effect on the plant. Yellow nut sedge flowers are unique in appearance and unmistakable. Yellow nut sedge produces thousands of little germinable seeds. Even with the best control method, the most we can expect is to prevent the majority of plants from flowering. The tubers form at the end of the rhizomes. The new tubers are white, turning brown over the course of the summer, and dark brown towards autumn. The previous year's tubers are black. They range from pinhead to pea-sized. The majority of the tubers are found in the plough zone. They're difficult to spot on the soil surface, since they're about the same size as particles of earth. The tubers are spread to other fields via machinery and vehicles. Once yellow nut sedge has established itself, it's almost impossible to eradicate. Once established, yellow nut sedge spreads in the direction of plowing, colonizing the entire field in just a few years. And it's here that we must be vigilant. Machinery used on contaminated field must not be brought onto uncontaminated field. After field work, roughly clean the machinery on the spot, wash down the path and road if necessary. Hose down the machinery, ensuring that the mud does not go back onto the fields. After Oily Easily found yellow nut sedge in his field, he contacted me at the Cantonal Plant Protective Service. Since the service is in close contact with agroscope researchers, we can base our advice on the latest findings. Oily, here's the Agroscope leaflet with the latest control measures. Thank you very much. So what should be done in that case? In mid-May, I inspect my fields. If I only find few yellow nut sedge plants, I pull them out with the rhizomes and tubers as best I can and dispose them in the waste. Using a herbicide doesn't help here. If yellow nut sedge becomes established and remains undetected, it can quickly infest large areas. The zone in question must be taken out of production so as not to contaminate the entire field. If the field is heavily contaminated, I put off sowing my maize until late May, early June. That way I can harrow out the nut sedge whenever it reaches the two to five leaf stage. That way I manage to protect my autumn yields. The alternative would be to leave the field uncultivated as a control measure. We recommend not growing any root crops such as celery or sugar beet on a contaminated field. Preventing the spread of the tubers is a crucial element in controlling yellow nut sedge. The majority of fields in Switzerland are not contaminated, so we still have the chance to stop the spread. I hope that my colleagues in this sector will be vigilant and report any yellow nut sedge found to the Cantonal Plant Protection Service. The Cantonal Plant Protective Service will advise you on the most effective measures for controlling infestation on your problem fields. Together, we can develop strategies for controlling yellow nut sedge. Only concerted action will enable us to successfully control this weed.